So I'm joined today by Daryl Williams. The conversation today came around following a, a, a tweet that, uh, that he made quite recently that received quite a splash uh, on, on the internet. And uh, it was pretty much about race commentaries, um, professionalism, uh, particularly uh, calling greyhounds by their names rather than their trap numbers. Uh, Daryl, I know it's something that you had a very good feedback from. Um, what, sh what, what is it that really sort of winds you up about it? Uh, well, to be honest, Floyd, I mean, it's, it's something that winds me up, particularly uh, when I have a dog that I own that is running. Um, I mean, Cloudy Aussie, for example, at Hove, often runs in Trap 6, and I get so wound up when I hear the Greyhound referred to purely as Trap 6 throughout the course of the race. Um, so that's one thing that annoys me. Um, I used to get particularly irritated, as many people do, when there was a big race, um, when obviously the commentator had no idea that they were calling a Cat 1 final, they could have been calling an A10, uh, no reference to any Greyhound's name at any time in the race. So that's just bad preparation, not knowing uh, what you're doing, not having done your research. But, you know, the more I think about it, I get wound up really whenever I, he I hear numbers in any Greyhound race these days. Um, on TRP, which I obviously work for, we're encouraged to call uh, names. Some of the commentators call mix of names and numbers, some, you know, more names and numbers, but they all include some reference to the name. And I think that it's just another example of greyhound racing being treated as a second-rate sport. Um, can, I mean, can you imagine, you know, in a horse race, imagine the Cheltenham Gold Cup or the Derby and the commentator calling that six from four and number 17 coming wide or, you know, um, man, you score a goal and it's, it's, the, it's the 10, it's the 10 shirt. He's put it in the back of the net. And, and, you know, you think about virtual horse racing, even those virtual horses get a name check. So, you know, this is something I've been strong on for a long time. There seems to be a consensus out there of other people who agree with me. I think a lot of owners in particular. So, look, let's try and see if we can get this, this changed. And it has to be changed for the whole industry. It's no use me doing it a certain way and other commentators doing it a certain way. This has to be something that has to be introduced right across the board, whether it's in betting shops, whether it's on track. Um, and I appreciate not everyone will want to call names throughout the course of a commentary. So... I think a, a good compromise is, is a mix of both. You know, when you've got greyhounds closely um, uh, matched early on, you know, it might be hard to call numbers, but when they go down the back and they start to spread out, and you can call, you know, the leader is X dog, you can call it the, you know, the two called this or the blue dog called this. And, and then please, when they, when they go to the line, uh, uh, absolute bare minimum, please call the name of the winner because if you own that dog, I mean, you know, let, let's give these dogs a bit of identity, a bit of recognition. That, that, that's all I'm asking for, really. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, I, I can remember when, when the, uh, I think back at Wembley, um, they had an Australian guy over who did like the first commentary. And uh, it's so much of a kind of a culture thing that I remember the, 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 Wem, the Wembley punter started booing when this guy was, was commentating on the race. <laughs> and that's within what the last 30 years. Um, yeah, definitely. So I entirely agree with you. I mean, how difficult is it to acquire the skill to be able to call them by names? I don't think it's that difficult. I mean, I obviously would say that, wouldn't I? Um, I think it's like everything. It's practice makes perfect. So the more you do it, the easier it gets. Um, I'm a great advocate of, uh, and if you listen to Australian commentators, you say they all do it. They've got eight dogs in every race. Every single one of those guys calls names. Some of them are, are better than others, granted, but what they do and what I would do as well in that kind of situation is don't be worrying about the dog that's 20 lengths behind or, or, you know, out the back. Once you get to the serious part of the race, all we're focusing on really are the leading two or three dogs, the dogs that are in contention. Now, if four of them come off the last bend together and you don't feel confident about calling all the names and, you know, people have said, look, there's a lot going on. There's not much time. Um, 30 seconds, you can call a lot of words, 120 words if you commentate. That's, that's a lot of names, a lot of, you know, a lot of flannel, a lot of, a lot of fill if you want. But once you're happy that, you know, dog A and dog B may be fighting out a finish and you're happy to call the two names, you know, dog on the inside, dog on the outside, red dog, blue dog, whatever it is. Because I think the other thing is people will criticise and say, well, you know, the casual guy going to the dog track, he, he doesn't know the name of this greyhound. He's looking for trap one. He's looking for trap two. Um, but then you look at horse racing. You know, you go horse racing, you watch a horse race, you go to the track, there's a big field of 20. Uh, they, they may tell you that your horse is in the pink jacket or it's on the far side or the striped cap, but they won't tell you that, you know, it's number four, it's number six. So if it happens in horse racing, it should happen in greyhound racing. I was going to say, given your experience, I mean, how, how many horses have you had to come? What would be the biggest fields that you had to commentate on? 
Uh, well, obviously, uh, I mean, I only ever call Greyhound races on track. I've never called a horse race on track. Frankly, there's a lot of people far better at me than doing that. And I, I you know, something 30 years ago I fancied, but I soon realised that the skill level was 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 far greater than I I, I had at that time. Um, so no, I mean, calling dog races is obviously the, the standard six. Uh, in the days when I used to uh, work at SIS as a voice, so we used to um, call off tube. So you know, you might get you might get 20 runners, for example, but 20 runners in a a three mile chase is different to 20 runners coming at you in a sprint. So yeah, you know, I, I can get through, I'd, I'd be, I'd be confident. I, I could call, um, you know, big fields, but um, as I say, I'll, I'll let others do that. It's, it's, it's not my, uh, it's not my preferred job. So one of the other things that uh, irritates me and, and uh, from what I've, from what I've read thus far, I think it irritates you as well is uh, an exuberance of cliched phrases. Cause that they can be a little bit irritating, don't they? Yeah, I think I think there's certain commentators that uh, may may use those more more than others. Um, I, I mean, look, let, let's be honest about it. To me, it's just it's just a, a way of filling, isn't it? Really, and um, I, I talk about the fact you've got 30 seconds. That's quite a lot of time, really. The number of words you can use, but uh, that th there must be better ways. Look, I, I'm, I, I know I know that's how some people commentate, but. I'd probably rather have, have numbers than old cliches, <laughs> if truth be told, honestly. And I don't want numbers. But but in order for, for this to progress, Floyd, um, you know, the only way it can work is for the companies involved, the platforms for, for, for the likes of SIS and TRP uh, to be on board. And, and as I say, TRP, we do it anyway. But so really for, for SIS, certainly in terms of the, the, the betting shop and the, uh, uh, the, the, the those races, they need to be on board with something like this, but also on track. It's no use introducing this and then, suddenly you're watching RPG TV and there's a track commentator who's using names all the time, and not numbers. So um, for this to work, there has to be strong support. And I don't quite know how, how we get to that, uh, who, who, you know, who we speak to in order to get everybody prepared to, to give it a go. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But I think, I think it's overdue. You know, these, these, these greyhounds, they've got identities, they've got names, they've got, you know, they, they've got history. Um, they, they warrant, they need more respect. They warrant, they warrant their names being mentioned. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. I, the, the, the one point that I was going to uh, make, and, and it was something that I think uh, the late, great Michael Fortune was fabulous at, and that was, wasn't just, as you say, calling the winner, calling the winner and the owner and frequently the breeder as well as they cross the winner. Now, I realise we're not going to be doing this necessarily for the fourth race at Crayford. However, I do feel that, you know, we talk a lot about the moment about owners involvement and, and keeping the owners in, engaged um surely that could be done I, I certainly think that can be done for the major races um if, if you're thinking about more um on track as opposed to races that go into betting shops or on rpg tv etc i mean there's no reason a lot, a lot of colleagues on rpg tv uh, now regularly include owners names it's not something that we're, we're, we're told to do but they're, they're often mentioned so yeah certainly for the major races I don't see why that isn't possible of course we do have the dilemma uh, where first names are not on the race car for example there, there's another thing maybe that, that needs change you know Miss, Mr A Smith is no use if you don't know uh, Mr A Smith's first name for example um, but again that leads me if we're thinking about on track commentaries here and and you know there are not that many tracks nowadays, I suppose, that have on-track commentators, um, save for the likes of, obviously, Toaster on the big nights, etc. You know, for me, big races, big commentators, um, Paul Lawrence particularly, you know, good good during the derby at Toaster springs to mind as a, as a very, very good commentator in that situation. He builds it up, he knows what the crowd wants. I think one of the other issues here, um, and, and I know it's not all about pound notes, but it, it does come into play, and that is that Many track commentators, on track commentators that are used, you know, are not being paid um, the right amount of money for the skills required. When, when the original toaster was in play, I would commentate there. Tony Ennis, excellent commentator, would commentate. Matt Chapman, you know, would commentate. Um, you know, love Matt or, 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 or hate him if you like, but he, you know, he will get the crowd going. He knows how to to get a crowd excited, excited and involved. But you won't see these guys commentating at the moment because. Tracks, unfortunately, don't include um, enough in their budget to allow this to happen. Um, I, I don't know what the fee is for on-track commentators. I call it Crayford occasionally. Uh, I have to say, uh, I've not asked for a pay rise, so I don't do it often enough for probably 10 years. Um, but 
I think many commentators are being paid um, a lot less than you, you would imagine. Um, I dare say they're probably commentators doing it for like 50 or 60 quid a night, um, where really the skill that's required, you, you, you should be paid a, a, you know, a fair amount of money. I don't know what a fair amount of money is. I, I'd say sort of 150 of pound-ish, yeah. 150 pound plus yeah. really to get a proper job. If you want a proper yeah. commentator, if you want somebody who's just going to, you, you, you know, turn up and do, do the gig and go home and go, well, that was, that was a nice three, three hours. I, I, I'll take my money, you know, uh, it's not really something I'm that interested in, but it, it, it was better than, uh, you know, the other gig I might have been offered. Um, but if you want a proper commentator, you know, go horse racing. These guys are paid serious money because they are seriously good at what they're doing. And again, if we want to take Greyhound Racing forward to that next level, and I'm thinking, I'm not talking run-of-the-mill meetings particularly, but I'm certainly thinking the big occasions. If there's a big race at a track, and, and you know, what about the tracks that don't even have a commentator on the big nights? I mean, for me, there's nothing worse. You, you, you turn up, and, and there's no commentator. I mean, come on, you know, these things have to be included in a budget. I know no tracks want to pay out any money, um, but this is something, this is vital. And get a good commentator, you build the crowd up, you get the crowd involved, you get them engaged. Um, you know, back in the days when we used to do Wimbledon, for example, you know, we, we were selling bets. We were encouraging people to have a bet on the tote. We were telling about, you know, the big dividends, et cetera, et cetera. So you don't just pay for the commentator, you pay for the whole package that hopefully sells the sport to those people who turn up on that night. And, um, you know, you know I, th I think it's worth every penny, I would say that. Uh, yeah, no, I know. I absolutely agree with you. I mean, we, we if we're going to go down the route of talking, for example, that the big thing everybody's on at the moment about the darts, the commentators bring that to the people. Otherwise, you've got two blokes standing there throwing darts and you can put the you can put the scores up, you know, one, four, eight, whatever the score may be. But without those, the commentators, it is a different event. And I, I don't think, ironically, in my view, I, I don't think it's the it's the calling of, of even the name, the numbers, or the or, or the dog's names. That's perhaps primary because people can see the race. It, it's actually engaging the people and creating the interest and the excitement and the build up. And as you said, talking before the race, you know, who is the favourite? What you know? Why is he the favourite? Is he expected to lead? It's engaging in, in something that in greyhound racing we are absolutely crap at. We are absolutely in crap at engaging people, many of whom come racing, they don't know the damn thing about it. And then you go, well, there it is, crack on, you'll, you'll soon pick it up. And they can't. And of course, obviously, for this to work as well, you have to have a PA system where the, where the audio is good. I mean, you know, I've been to many tracks where um, I, I seem to remember Wimbledon was very good, actually, back in the day. But the best place to listen to commentaries at Wimbledon was actually in the loos because you, you, you've got a very clear commentary there. And, and many tracks now, um, I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to name tracks, but I, but I will. As I was there the other night, we were at Hove in the restaurant, we had a lovely night, it was a great meal, etc. We had a brilliant table, but I couldn't hear the commentary. I couldn't hear Pat Kelly's commentary. Uh, the yeah. speaker was probably miles away. Um, you know, you're trying to listen out for the result, and it was like, shut up, shut up. Who got third? Was it three? Oh, he's, I, I can't hear what he said. And that's not Pat's fault, but that's just bad audio because the, the, the system, and, and I'm not picking on Hove, it just happened yeah. to be where I was, but this will apply to many, many tracks. And, um, yeah, listen, if, if, if you're trying to encourage people to, to, to be part of it and to be, uh, you know, more involved, then... Yes, the audio has to be good. The quality coming from the broadcaster has to be good. You need somebody who's going to turn up. I mean, Matt Chapman is a perfect example. What you will get with Matt, you know, is you'll get the, the, the absolute full works. He'll he give, he give it the maximum. You know, we know he has a style that won't suit everybody. But someone of his ilk is just what you need to get the crowd going. I mentioned Paul Lawrence, you know, Paul Brilliant on Dar during the Derby. There are a lot of good commentators out there. But let's be honest about it. There are some pretty poor ones as well. Yeah. Um because th this is just the nature of, the, of the, the, the beast because of the way the whole thing is financed. You know, um, if, if, you, if you're not prepared to pay a reasonable amount, a reasonable amount of money, I'm afraid you're not going to get, um, you know, a particularly good call up all of the time. 